astaghfiruh wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina man yahdihillahu fala mudilla lah wa man yudlil fala hadiya lah ashhadu an la ilaha illa allah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan 'abduhu wa rasuluhu salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi amma ba'du fa inna astaqal hadith kitabullah ta'ala wa khayra al hadi hadi muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharra al umuri muhdathatuha wa kullu muhdathatin bid'ah wa kullu bid'atin dhalalah wa kullu dhalalatin fin nar thumma amma ba'd can everyone hear me okay my respected brothers and sisters in islam we are living at a time when everything in this dunya it seems to have a soundtrack very rarely will you find somebody who he's gone even a couple of hours especially in this country he's gone even a couple of hours without listening to some form of music whether that was on purpose or whether he was just exposed to it in his surroundings and we see today that the global music industry is worth billions and billions of dollars and it is misleading people from the remembrance of Allah because this is what people they want to be they want to be what they see in the music videos they want to be what they hear about they want to have the nice cars and the women and the drugs and the alcohol and this is affecting the lives of many muslims as well as non-muslims today inshallah we will address the standing of music in the religion of al-islam we will not take it from the viewpoint of our own desires we will not take it from the viewpoint of our own interpretation but we will take it on the viewpoint of the Quran and the authentic sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam after that we will have a look at music and its evil effects on that which it calls to and how that will affect the muslim living in today's society then inshallah we will take a very pressing issue of the daf and an nasheed after that inshallah we will have a look at what the muslim should live his sound his life to i.e. the muslim's soundtrack in the Quran, in Surah Luqman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and of, and of mankind is he who purchases idol talk to mislead men from the path of Allah. So in Surah Luqman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that there is a group of people and they purchase idol talk and the only reason why they do so is to mislead men from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And before we go into the tafsir or the explanation of this ayah, it's very important to note that you or I, we cannot come and say, this is my interpretation. Here is what I think this ayah means. We need to stick to what the scholars of Al-Islam, they have come with. And when we look at the way this religion has been revealed, we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down Jibreel alayhi salam with the Qur'an. And the Messenger of Allah, he taught it to his companions. And from them, learnt many, many students. And from them, learnt even more students. And so on and so on, until we have the religion where it stands today. And so if you, are, if you were to ask me, or to ask any Muslim, who is the best of the teachers, who are the best, and who has the greatest understanding of this religion, then without a doubt, it is the companions of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They had the best of teachers, so why shouldn't they have the best of understanding? So whenever we have a statement of the companions, any one of the companions, then it holds a lot of weight within this religion. Because Allah says about the companions, Radiallahu anhum wa radu an. That Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with him as their Lord, and so they are going to obey him. So when you have one companion, when he says something, you stand up and you listen. But when you have a group of companions and they all agree upon something, then it becomes obligatory upon the Muslim to take what they are saying because this is part of the deen. So concerning this ayah, among, uh, uh, sorry, concerning this ayah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and there was a group of people and they will, and they will purchase idle talk to mislead men from the remembrance of Allah, we have many many sayings of the companions but i will just bring to you three of them ibn abbas may allah be pleased with him ibn umar and ibn mas'ud they all agreed that this ayah this idle talk which allah mentions is music and singing 
But these are not three normal companions. Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, was the cousin of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was a man who the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam took him in his garment and said, "Oh Allah, give him comprehension of this religion." So the Prophet alaihi salatu wasallam made a special du'a for Ibn Abbas. And Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, when talking about Ibn Abbas, he said, I never came across somebody who understood the deen of Allah and his depth of understanding was greater than that of Ibn Abbas. So he is the sheikh, the people, they call him the sheikh of this deen. Then you have Ibn Mas'ud, concerning whom the Prophet wasallam he said, learn the Qur'an from four people. And Ibn Mas'ud was one of those people. And he said concerning himself, and this is not out of arrogance, or he was not boasting. He said, Wallahi, there is not a single ayah in the Qur'an except that I know why it was revealed and I know where it was revealed. So he is the sheikh of the Qur'an of this ummah. And then you have Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him. And enough it is that his father was the second greatest human being to walk this earth after the prophets and messengers and after Abu Bakr as-Siddiq because his, his father was Umar ibn al-Khattab. So he learnt from the best. <coughs> he was somebody who he was firm on upholding the Qur'an and the Sunnah. So when all of these three people, they agree that this ayah, it relates to music and singing, then it is not for any sane Muslim who is sincere and he sincerely wants Allah and his messenger to come and say, this means something else. Because these three men, they are outstanding figures within the deen of Allah. And so we have people today who they use their own intellect and they use their own whims and desires to try and make rulings. And they say, no, this ayah, it doesn't refer to singing and music. My understanding is better than the understanding of the companions. But then I ask those people, how do you counter the clear hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari? in which the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explicitly stated, among my ummah, there will rise a people who permit zina, silk, alcohol and musical instruments. Now at this stage we need to look at the construction of this hadith. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned these four things together. Everybody knows in this room, that music, uh, sorry, that alcohol and fornication is haram and it is amongst the biggest problems facing this ummah in the world today. But then he, mes- he mentioned silk, about which he said it is for the disbelievers in this life and for the Muslims in the akhirah. And then he also attached on the end musical instruments. So why would he mention three things which are so gravely haram, such massive sins and then attach musical instruments if they were permissible and there is no way that you can interpret this any other way these people they try and come and they try and manipulate the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you want to go and listen to music do it in your own time, it's for your own destruction but when the people they come and they try to manipulate the deen of Allah and make rulings and they say I'm a free thinker I'm a modernist, I have, I have all of this information, I'm an academic. No, you're not an academic. You're the person about whom Allah says, فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا That in their hearts is a disease and Allah has increased them in their disease. You're not, you're not an academic of this religion. So you're not permissible, it's not permissible for the Muslim to go against these clear, authentic ahadith and the ayah in the Qur'an. If you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you should know. Allah says, does the one who created, should he, should, does he not know best? The one who created you, doesn't he know what's best for you? So the Muslim, he listens and he obeys. So I've brought you very clear, concise proofs from the Quran and the Sunnah that music is haram. Likewise, if that's not enough for you, then we have the clear and unambiguous statements of the Salaf, the pious predecessors. Ibn Mas'ud, again, this one who, the, the companion, radiallahu anhu, who we've already mentioned, 
He said, singing increases the heart in hypocrisy, just like water increases the vegetation. Umar ibn Abd al-Aziz, he was advising his sons. Now when a father, he advises his, his sons, he will only give them advice on the most pressing of issues. He will only mention the most important of issues. And he said, my sons, stay away from singing because it excels the heart in hypocrisy the way water causes the grass to grow. And so we see that without a shadow of a doubt, in this deen, the best of companions, the best of the un those who understood this religion, they were very, very clear that music and singing is not permissible in this religion. When I was given this topic, I, d I was uh, driving to London and I thought, let me turn on the radio and see what these people are talking about today. Now, if anyone listens to music, forgive me if I've got the lyrics wrong, but the man, he was talking about uh, he was talking about some wild love he has for this girl and he was saying, I'll stand in front of a train for you, I'll catch blades for you, I'll do this for you, I'll do that for you. And I was standing there and I thought, subhanAllah, you really must love this girl. What benefit is there to you? You stand in front of a train, you're dead man. What's the point? And so we see, and I was thinking, subhanAllah, just a few years ago, these same people, they were rapping about guns and violence and drugs and I'm gonna kill you because you're from the East Coast and I'm from the West Coast but today they're rapping about or they're singing about love and he sounded like a woman until I heard his name they're rapping about love and about romance and you're my love and blah 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 why because this is what's fashionable <coughs> and the Muslim he cannot and he should not be deceived because all they want is money and they will rap about the moon they will rap about pigs and cows if you tell them to if, they make, if it makes them money and this is something that the Muslim he cannot be deceived by he cannot want this lifestyle because this lifestyle is fake, it doesn't exist and from the evils of music is that studies show that at times music can be worse than alcohol because it mesmerizes the mind and it contains subliminal messages and that alcohol it will only affect you and you'll get your high and then you'll have a, a hangover for a, few, for a few hours or whatever but with music it actually affects your actions because those subliminal messages they affect your mind and we know that in Al-Islam anything that gives you this stupor anything which makes you drunk or controls your thoughts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden it a very clear example other studies show that when you're driving and you have a loud bass line playing in the background, your heart rate increases, you start to drive more, more in a more aggressive manner and it gives you this high. Anyone who drives, I'm sure if you listen to music, may Allah guide you, but if you do, you'll notice, you will have experienced this, that I'm not telling lies, but when there's a loud music playing in the background and it's got a, ba a bass line, you start to bop your shoulders you start to drop the gears a little bit and your speed increases so really there's no doubt that this music it actually makes you drunk then we can go past this beat or this beat line and we can start to examine the lyrics themselves how many of these songs they encourage giving in charity how many of these songs do they encourage you being good to your parents being good to your neighbors how many encourage manners rather they're speaking about spending a million dollars on 24 inch rims for your ride and smacking your up and I'm coming from this town to kill you because of this blah 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 this is just pure kufr and it's disbelief which they are calling the Muslims to they're not calling you to the remembrance of Allah rather they are misleading you listening to such things it distracts an individual from the true, true reality of the dunya and it makes his desires glitter for him because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us in such a way that we are sensual beings and we have feelings and this music it attracts our feelings it attracts our emotions and it makes us want this gangster lifestyle or it makes us want the drugs or it makes us want the money or the women and it leads our sisters to believe that being a virgin is not good because it's not fashionable 
because all they see around them is scantily dressed women and so it affects our sisters in that way and on the other side it affects our brothers because it makes them see that having a girlfriend is cool doing haram things it doesn't matter because as long as you get the dunya then it doesn't matter and studies have shown that listening to rap and R&B music it causes an individual to see women as sex objects and you become more you become more accepting of violence and of drug use and it just becomes something normal to you and if somebody was to come to you now and say take this drug you would never take it but this is one of the tricks of the shaitan he, he, he exposes you to it slowly 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 and you don't know that this listening to this music it might actually lead you out of the religion of al-islam at some point in your life because of the subliminal messages which you hear until we see today our brothers driving up and down roads with music pumping windows down alcohol in their hands and they think they look cool because their desires have deceived them this music has deceived them they don't know that I look like a donkey braying up and down the street they don't know that because this music it has deceived them this lifestyle it has deceived them and this music it takes them to an ulterior universe and they spend, spend hours and hours and hours fantasizing about this perfect life which they're going to live which they've seen 50 cent living and he's got his million dollar watches etc 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 they spend hours and hours fantasizing about this how am I going to get there I need it I want it doesn't matter how I get there it's halal for me because I just need it and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he mentioned that the speech of some people it is magic it, it, it is magic it has the same effect of magic it mesmerizes you and it hypnotizes you and this is what this music does until we see people they come today and they will queue up hours and hours and hours just to get this man's signature on a book what, what benefit is that to you really so absolutely without a shadow of a doubt we see that that which music calls to it is haram that which it leads to is haram the listening to it is absolutely prohibited within this religion and is actually one of the major sins in this religion our hearts my brothers and sisters are vessels and they are created pure by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but filling them with the words of shaitan it makes your heart filthy and it makes your heart impure and this it will judge sorry it will have an effect upon your actions just a pictorial representation of this I want you to imagine you have a jug of water and that water is absolutely pure then that jug and that water it is our hearts but then I want you to imagine you start adding just a little bit of mud to that water it causes the water to become blackened and this is the same for the person's heart adding music and singing it blackens the heart and it blackens the heart to a point where a person they can no longer distinguish between right and wrong and eventually this build up of filth it causes the person's heart to die and if you go away from this lecture with just one thing then I want you to go away with the following thing that I'm about to say that it is not possible to have the words of Allah and the words of shaitan in the same heart it is not possible for the words of Allah and the words of shaitan to mix within your heart where you have one it is not possible to have the other there is no middle ground so we've already established I think that we shouldn't listen to music so now let's talk about something which to me for the practicing brothers and sisters is worse than music and that is nasheed we find that today listening to these nasheeds it has occupied a vast amount of time for our brothers and sisters and it has the same effect as this music it takes you away from the remembrance of Allah before we take a look at this nasheeds and I'm not making a, a ruling here I will, I will uh, expand upon this insha'Allah but before I do let's take a look at the duff 
Aisha radiyallahu anha, she narrates in, and this is in Sahih al-Bukhari and in Muslim, that she was with two of her friends. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he entered upon them, entered into her house, and they were playing the duff. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went and he went and he lied down on his bed and he covered his face and he turned his back to what they were doing. At that, her father, Abu Bakr radiallahu an, he walked in and he became very, very angry. And he said, are the instruments of shaitan in the household of the messenger of Allah? Upon this, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he uncovered his face from under the duvet and he said, leave it, O Abu Bakr, leave them, for these are the days of Eid. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he made a special exception and on that situation because these are the days of Eid and every ummah it has its days of Eid let them celebrate O Abu Bakr on these days but from this hadith it is clear that Abu Bakr he came in he heard the duff he knew it was the duff he saw that they were playing the duff and yet he still said are the musical instruments of the shaitan in the household of the messenger of Allah so he himself recognized that the duff it's under the same ruling as the rest of the musical instruments. The second exception to this rule. On the walima of one of the companions, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he was sitting with the companion and some young girls came and they began to beat on the duff and they began to sing. And they said, and they were mourning those people who were killed at the battle of Badr. And then one of them said, and amongst us is a Prophet who knows what will happen tomorrow. And upon that, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, no, don't say what you just said. Go back to saying what you were saying before and you were mourning the dead. And this is in Bukhari. And the third exception, a slave girl came. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he returned from one of the battles. And a slave, slave girl, she came and she said, I made an oath by Allah that if you returned safely, I would come to you and I would beat the duff and I would sing to you. What did the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he replied? He said, if you vowed to Allah to do it, then do that. Otherwise, do not do it. So we have three clear ahadith which make an exception for the duff. And they make it permissible only in certain situations. The walima or the marriage ceremony. On the days of Eid. And when a, lo a loved one, he comes back after a long period of absence. But let's not fool ourselves. These were three women playing on this duff and singing. There is no reports of a man standing there and playing on a duff as we have today. Outside of these three exceptions, the duff is haram. And this is supported by many sayings of Aisha radiallahu anha. She was actually in that hadith. She was the one who was narrating that hadith. That my friends, I and my friends, we were playing on the duff. But she herself has made a statement which says that outside of these three exceptions, and it is not permissible to play the duff. Abdullah ibn Abbas, as we've mentioned, the sheikh of this ummah, he said, the duff is haram. String instruments are haram. Drums are haram and flutes are haram. And this is narrated by Al-Bayhaqi. And my brothers and sisters, I want you to notice how the companions, they were so sure about the duff. There was no middle ground. They didn't make excuses to feed their desires. Their statements are pure. They're very, very clear and very, very concise. And they tell us exactly what they thought. So it's not for a Muslim to come today and say, no, this is not what it actually means. It means something different. And now I'm going to deal with an issue which I think deals with probably or affects the vast majority of the people in here more than listening to music and that is the issue of nasheed. Firstly, the nasheed, somebody who sings it is a munshid. So I'll refer to them as munshids from now on. And the scholars, they state that the munshid and these nasheeds which they sing, they are not what they used to be. In the past, they used to be talking about the remembrance of Allah. They used to be dealing with issues of faith, issues such as the correct jihad, issues such as uh, marriage, 
etc., etc., etc. But nowadays, they have sunk to a different level. They have sank, sunk to the levels of the evildoers. We have men singing and softening their voices like women. We have men who are just like the pop stars. It's the same thing. And very rarely do we pay attention to the words themselves, but we listen to the tune. And I'm sure everybody knows of a certain person who he sang in English, and he's an Arab. He sang in English. And yet the Arabs, they like to listen to this song, yet they don't understand the lyrics. So you're telling me that no, this, remem this makes the remembrance of Allah. Because these Arabs, they don't even understand what he's saying. The only reason they're listening is for the tune. And the scholars, they have stated that when one of the conditions of nasheed being permissible is that it has to call to the remembrance of Allah. Yet these people, they don't even know what he's calling to. He could be singing A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Yet they listen to him for the tune. And we know that listening for the tune is not permissible. We live in a society now where these nasheed singers, they are not upon the guidance of the Prophet wasallam, either in their appearance or that which they call to. And yet, we have many of our sisters, they're just besotted by them, they, they're in love. I can't sleep until I listen to X and Y and Z. Rather, I can't sleep until I listen to the Qur'an. But no, I can't sleep until I listen to, is it Zawjati or whatever it is. You know? The man singing about his wife. How does that make you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And you see the ruling is they fall under the same things as that which is mentioned in the ayah. They distract you from the remembrance of Allah. Why isn't it that we listen to a surah from the Quran? And the reciter is beautifying his voice. If you need to listen to a tune, listen to the tune of the Quran being recited. That will benefit your heart. That will cleanse your heart. Listen to it, think about it, ponder over it. Because Allah says, verily in the remembrance of Allah, do hearts find rest and do hearts find peace. But unfortunately we live in a time today where these groups, they have a following, they have fan clubs, they have Facebook pages. And it, how, how is it different to the groups in the West today? These brothers in our religion, they know full well that they will be a fitna to their sisters. They know full well that when they are looking soulfully into the camera and they have the cheesy grin on, they know full well what the sisters are going to be thinking. Ah, he's, he's a heartbreaker. <laughs> they know full well that this is going to happen. And yet, they continue to do it. Why? Because it brings them money. To the point where there's been a few scholars or a few reciters of the Qur'an who have lost a lot of respect amongst the scholars because they turned to nasheed. And you see where it leads. There's a certain somebody who he reverted to the deen and he let, let music go altogether. And then he started singing. And now he's standing up on stage with a guitar in front of the non-Muslims. It's a very, very slippery slope, my brothers and sisters. And I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but it's up to you to judge for yourself. Is this nasheed? If I listen to it once in a while, and it brings me to the remembrance of Allah, then it's permissible. Then you should do it. As long as there's no duff. As long as there's no musical instruments. As long as what he is saying or what he is singing about, it is it is praiseworthy and it's from the deen of Allah. Then go ahead and listen to it. But if you are in your car and you have a nasheed playing where you could have had the Quran playing, then these are some things which you yourselves, brothers and sisters, need to judge and think, is this taking me away from the remembrance of Allah? And then finally, we will deal with the believer's soundtrack. As I've stated, literally every single person here he seems to have a soundtrack in his mind. He seems to have some backing. And it's up to you 
what you make that backing. It can either be the music and the handiwork of the shaitan or it can be the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And know my brothers and sisters that if you live your life to a certain soundtrack then before the moment of your death what will come to your mind is that certain soundtrack. If you live to the soundtrack of you can find me in the club then when you die at that moment of death you will want to be in that club which you have been where you know you've been losing yourself and your mind in and that leads to a bad end and ultimately we need to remember that we are on a journey and allah has sent us down clear guidance to make us successful in this life and in the life of the hereafter but if you're listening to music my brothers and sisters and know on the on your deathbed you're not going to be able to say la ilaha illallah because your mind will be clouded as we said that jug of water it becomes clouded when you put the mud in it then your mind it will become clouded and you won't be able to say la ilaha illallah because you never listened or you never th thought about la ilaha illallah so the believer is somebody who he keeps his tongue moist with the remembrance of allah so when you're walking to lectures when you're driving to uh, to to university or you're on the bus then I'm not saying don't listen to nasheeds full stop, but I'm saying no, that the Qur'an is something which we should be busying ourselves with. This is something which will impact on our lives, on our hearts, on our actions. And after this, we should all take a moment to think about what is my soundtrack? What soundtrack am I living my life to? If I go in to the shopping center, and it's very important that the scholars have differentiated between hearing something and listening to something. We live in the West. It's absolutely impossible for us to go out anywhere without hearing music. But if you're somebody who's that, you begin to listen and you begin to start tapping your feet and you begin to start singing along, then you know that you've been affected by this. And you know that you need to take yourself out. You need to cleanse your heart so that when you do hear this music even if you listen to it it has no effect on you so my brothers and sisters I'm going to end on that note but I just want you to imagine that you're on your deathbed what soundtrack do you want to be dying to because the title of this talk is the soundtrack of the Muslim or the soundtrack of the believer we haven't specified the soundtrack in life or the soundtrack in death so I want you to ask yourself, if you were to die now, what soundtrack would you be going out to? Jazakumullah khair, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.